Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chris Brown. He's Dave. I'm Dave. Yes, he is. And this is... This is Napping Princess, our feature film for today's episode of 8 Star Anime. Now... It's like we're doing a theme this week. Apparently so. Um, you know what? The best thing to do for this is to start with plot number... <laughs> plot number one. Plot number one. Yes. Uh, where do you really want to start? I so mean, there's a character named Kokone. Yes. And Kokone and her dad live together. And Kokone has a narcoleptic problem. She likes to go to sleep a lot. And <laughs> in her imaginary world, she remembers stories that her dad told her as a little kid where she was a magic princess. Yes. And... The story in the dream relates to the real world because fucking reasons. Uh well, let's <laughs> let's backtrack just a little bit. Oh, in, in this train wreck, in, in this train, train wreck, wreck of an anime, um, the idea is as uh, Kokone. Uh, Sleep, she just has this magical world where she's princess and everything's controlled by her magic. Um, however... With a magic tablet. A magic tablet, nonetheless. Now, this magic tablet uh, happens to be something that's represented also in the real world that has a uh, software. software program for self-driving vehicles. Wait, say that again? Self-driving vehicles. And if you're like, how does that relate to anything else these people have been talking about? That's what we <laughs> were wondering. To figure out. So, and throughout the film, there's controversy between our obvious bad guy with the goatee. <laughs> controversy. <laughs> I mean, conflict. Con yes, no, there's a guy. No, no, controversy was the right word I went with. There's a guy who wants to get the tablet in the real world. And in the uh, imaginary world, he's like the evil vizier. In fact, when he first shows up, I'm like, bad guy. Got to go Immediately. Shoot, his own profile picture. <laughs> so... The girl's dad sends her a picture in one of the scenes. He's like, don't trust this bad guy. It's him, her mom, and this dude in the background doing this. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> Except they're standing this way. <laughs> Quite literally. That's exactly what you say about <laughs> <laughs> It's like... <laughs> I mean, I lost the it. only thing this guy could have done... Anything worse is if he had been sitting there with an evil black cat going, I have come for your tablets and your daughter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so oh. the entire time, um, there has been a conflict um, between this bad guy and um, the rest of the family because apparently um, he's on the, the, the our bad guy, I um, forgot his name to my life, but. Watanabe, I think. Yeah, it's like Watanabe. He is acting on his own the entire time, trying to get the tablet, get the secrets of the self-driving vehicles and whatnot. Unbeknownst to... So he can take control of control the, the company. company. Or, if you're dreaming, control of the kingdom. <sighs> yes, I know. No, it's just... It, it, this whole movie went from... We don't know what we're doing. We don't know what's going on. To about two thirds of the movie, we're like, "Oh, I think we're catching on to what makes <clears throat> starting to make sense." And yeah, then it all of a sudden, <clears throat> real quick. So there's this story, and like sixty percent of it makes sense, and then the forty percent of it is fantasy, which is okay. Yeah. And then the way they kind of blend it don't make a lot of sense, but it's okay. And you're thinking to yourself. Okay, story A, story B is being mirrored, it's cute, let's see where it goes. It doesn't know where it wants to go. Mm. It gets to a certain point and it's like, now nah, let's wrap it up. How? Who cares? Just do it. Pretty much. So, you know what, I, to be honest, since we're going to be really talking about this movie, whether we're blasting it or giving it praise in any way, shape, form, let's go ahead and talk about its cosmetics, its tangibles. Yes. And, to be honest, uh, if we want to talk about the audio portion of this, uh, I don't have a problem with the voice acting. We did watch it in English. Um, I thought that part was all right. Most of the sound effects were good. good. Uh, most of the sound effects. There was there a was few there that were strange. Strange and out of place for whatever ungodly reason. Um, however, Spoiler. 
they use a flushing toilet when the bad guy gets consumed by fire. Why? Who knows? Now, visually, I I, I do have some problems with the visuals just a little bit because yeah. it, like, when they're not necessarily that anything was wrong with it because I thought, you know, even between the dream world and the real world, the animations didn't really change much. No. Me. But their use of CGI seemed out of place and slightly distracting to me in certain spots. I didn't recognize the CGI, but then I don't look for it. I enjoyed the animation style. Um, the the character was cute. The yeah. the friend was sufficiently dorky. Yeah, but he Dad's I, a rebel at forty. I mean the slice of life portion of it. I wanted to eat some of the fresh tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> they drew the tomatoes really well. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't wrong. I mean, it was a great, beautiful, like, yeah, yeah. scenery and everything. So I'll give it credit there. It's just that um, I think a lot of its audio and some of the use of CGI in certain spots kind of just a little clunky and didn't really work well with me. Um, personally, I have to give the whole I, that whole aspect a two. Um, I wanted to give it a three, but... I can't get past it. I give it a three because the audio is wonky. Um, I think the anime is great. The animation is great. Yes. I think the visuals are fun. Um, the The audio aspect does what it needs to do. And then sometimes it's weird. It is. Uh, it, it, but, you know. Uh, I mean, that's saying, cool. I mean, not saying two is a bad thing. It's just that I think there's just some spots that I yeah, thought could Yeah, it just averages myself. out for you. I get you. Yeah. Um, now, if we get to more of the story and actual overall enjoyment of things, um, overall enjoyment, about two-thirds of the movie, I was actually starting to enjoy it. Like, something about it, I was like, oh, okay, it's starting to click. Awesome. And then, it, towards the end, where it just went, sh where they just went straight fantasy through all the real climax of the storyline, and nothing's explained before then, so it's kind of just a wash. It's just really cool effects. This is happening. This big fight. Cool. Um, obviously, we now know at this point that the magic world and the real world are one and the same at this point. Just and this girl's delusional. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like she's tripping on acid the, like, the entire yeah, I, last third of the movie. And I'm thinking, what I, the heck? I don't know who has to take the cat drugs to like this or get it to make it entertainment. Um the story for me, everything that happens in the real world is cool, cool. and everything that happens in the fantasy was dumb. I, I, and it really messed up the enjoyment because it did. Yeah, I'm just sitting there going, I'm not I'm not experiencing this movie. It's being inflicted upon me. Because I'm sitting thinking to myself, okay, we finally get to the point where we realize our bad guy in the real world wants to take over the company. He's doing everything he can on his end to take care of it. And the only thing we know for sure is the current uh, chief of staff, as well as we find out the grandfather of our main character, uh, Kokone. And I was like, okay, cool. He figures it out. This guy gets arrested. Da -da -da. Yeah, it's like I a plot device. And... Like, we, we get that part, but the whole fantasy portion of this... Makes no sense. So there's a monster in the fantasy world like a colossus. I made the joke when he started showing up. I'm like, oh good! Godzilla's here! Now something makes sense because he comes up out of the ocean, ocean and he's coming towards the town. And what is it? What is it supposed to represent? Who knows? Now, one thing I didn't... Now, I'll, I'll go ahead and give my scoring for this. I'm also going to give it a two. Because I do have to admit, I did enjoy it for at least two-thirds of the way through. Yeah. So, because it was good up until the crappy ending. I'm going to give the story and entertainment value a two as well, because the story is half good. Half really good. Uh, the entertainment is, for me, I would think be subjective. It really would be. I didn't find the fantasy aspect to be entertaining. I found it to be trite. I think it wouldn't be so bad if the fantasy portion had stayed fantasy where, like, you know, okay, cool, the fantasy happens. Like, when she started dreaming and dragging the other boy into the dream, dream? it's like, okay, now what is going on? Yeah, that's what I said. That seemed a little odd. I think when she, I think when she fell asleep and it was just about her and her doing her thing, and then when she woke up, things happened, I was okay with that to a degree. 
the problem is when the boy came in at the end, we're like everyone's conscious. All of a sudden, we're now in this best, fantasy world. Seemed odd. Best character in the anime was Joy, the little toy. Toy, yes. He's a little toy wolf. Second best character in the anime, the self-driving motorcycle. Yes. <laughs> self-driving motorcycle was great. Which I, like I said, to this point, it's Morio's dad, close runner-up. It's because he, because he would made the most sense. He, well, he was the only one that was just like. Why should I help you? I was to say, yeah, screw you, buddy. Click. You know, I was like, but it's, it's, now, granted, uh, we were uh, looking up some Wikipedia stats and whatnot earlier. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to delude, to, not even worry about the numbers, about their gross income and whatnot. Right, right. There was something I noticed is that apparently this takes uh, place following another film that they probably did or another uh, book or something. I, I got glimpses of it. Okay. And I guess... There probably would be some things that were missing if we didn't see something that probably came before this. Oh, I don't know. And I'm not sure. I would have to look up again. Uh, hey, anybody that knows anything about this or is listening to this, let us know. Yeah. Tell us how bad we are. About knowing tell us what we're missing because <laughs> it feels like the anime is missing a lot of stuff too. I agree. Now, granted, the numbers seemed interesting. Now, this is based on Wikipedia. This is based on people's... Well, I mean, it won an award at the 45th uh, Anime Award thing, it yeah, said. It yeah, was the best independent film. Yeah, uh, best anime independent film, and I said, well, I don't know what year it was or whatnot, but it, hey, it's not necessarily that it could be that bad. Oh, this is a new movie. This is from yeah. 2017. And yeah, it it's just relatively released, new. It was just yes. released January in America. So, I look at that and I kind of go, okay, so obviously... Did well elsewhere. And in Japan, it grossed at, what, $1.4 million yeah, dollars yeah. US? Yeah. And, of course, here in the United States, it hadn't even breaking 50000 Well, it's just starting to. And I think but, see, but my thought process is, I don't reason it just now started that way is a lot of people never even knew this film existed until, boom, DVD, Blu-ray, yeah, I think out. I think they only probably had this show up in a few movie theaters. Exactly. Like... Maybe 15, who knows? I'm just Well, they, they do the whole select theater for a lot of anime right. shows and stuff like that. Apparently, they have to be shown in a theater so that they can turn around and sell them as DVDs. So, I remember um, reading it about an American movie in England that was so bad. It was a Shia LaBeouf movie. Mm -hmm. Everybody made the joke that it was so bad it only made like $26 in England. But the point was is they only showed it one time in a theater. Once it's shown in the theater... Then they can sell the DVDs and the Blu-rays and stuff like that. Put it on cable television and stuff like that. It has to do with distribution laws. So I think that's why the values of this in America is so low. A, it's new. And B, they only put it in a few theaters just to get that through that legal loophole. Fair enough. But, I mean, I saw this while I was browsing through Walmart. And I'm thinking <laughs> to myself, huh. Random DVD. Let's do this. Well, I'm okay with picking up. You know, random DVDs. Random DVDs. Because uh, I usually do it for a lot of my kung fu flicks. You know, uh, well ghost, uh, well ghost studios. Oh, so really good stuff. So, Morio's awesome fight scene. <laughs> He's gonna beat up other. The nerd kid's gonna beat up other engineering <laughs> nerd dudes. <laughs> Well, uh, well I, I like the fact that they had him kind of be like this man-up type character. I uh, didn't mind Go on without me. I'll protect you. <laughs> she was already going. Turns around. <laughs> she Where did go? <laughs> yeah, she was going. No, granted, well, granted, I think that was hilarious. Now, I think all the side characters had, even though a lot of them weren't really developed, per se, were pretty hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And, um... Like the best friend and... Yeah, because you had... Cause, to me, Morio, the best friend, I thought was uh, a good opposite of her. Because she, even in this series, she's not very motivated. Slacks off a lot. Uh, has grandeurs of going to college, but obviously not quite... Doing not, anything to make it happen. happen. Whereas her friend Morio is all... He's been to Tokyo doing a lot of extra studying. He's doing all this great stuff. You know, he's, you know, he's doing all his research. He's doing everything he can, and to make his future, you know, prosper. So you can see the two opposites. And without him kind of being there to help out where she needs it, 
She'd be lost and probably would have been captured. Everything probably would have gone to hell. And I don't know what town they would live in, but the people in this town are the most unobservant people in the world. <laughs> this girl sneaks into an airport, steals this dude's briefcase, while there's no one in the airport. There's like two people behind the counter, an evil dude, and she's all like... Let's and fix and this is her sneaking. <laughs> exactly. Not a single bit of that made any sense to me. I was like, you probably would have could have gotten away with it a lot better and a lot faster if you just walked up and did what you had yeah, to do. Yeah, just ran <laughs> and snatched that and ran out. Took off. I was like, you could have gotten that. I just never understood why. Why are they even bothered with it? I don't know. Now, folks, if I had to pick a favorite moment in this film, um, oddly enough, we made jokes about it, but it's probably the truth. Probably the ending when the family got together, the <laughs> grandfather, the dad, and the daughter. Summer days eating watermelon. That's My favorite fun. part was the FBI warning. It made the most sense. It really did. Now, uh, like I said, I've already exclaimed how, what my least favorite part of it, and that was the last third of the movie. Where yeah, the whole, the whole last third of the movie. Well, it's because like, the whole last third of the movie was this climactic scene where we're finally <laughs> getting what's going on, and it's all a fantasy that doesn't make any goddamn sense. It's like, sense. hey, you remember this whole movie you were watching? Here's the end of it, and we're going to totally disrespect you by not telling you anything. Nope. It's, it, it, the ending does two things wrong. A, it, it gives you a climactic scene in a fantasy world where none of it made sense to begin with. Two, it fast tracks. Because it goes from... It okay, bullet trains you. <laughs> it pretty much bullet trains you to going, okay, we finally made it here to... Okay. We only got 11 minutes left. You got 11 minutes left. Let's wrap this up. And closure. Done. You're right. But... What, what closure happened? Like, we, we don't even know what happened. We don't even know what they talked about. We just know they're... We're going to be a happy family now. All it's, of a sudden, Grandpa sitting around in a Yukata having watermelon with Dad, who he's not seen in 17, 17 years. years. Huh. None of the... Nah. Just don't understand. I really don't. Ah, the fact that I give this film literally a four, four. you give it a five. Ah... That's just because the first, like, two-thirds of the movie was really, really decent and really good. And it's just that that fast-track ending just completely botches it. In my I wouldn't advise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't offer this movie to people. No. And this is not a movie I would go, hey, you should, have you seen, have you seen uh, The Napping Princess? It's so hilarious. No. Nah. And uh, it's very similar to one we just reviewed recently called uh, Summer Wars. It's yes. probably last week's video Considering the way these Pretty sure they are. Yeah, be last week's video. But the only thing How about... it has a story A and a story B that are wonky. The difference is, is that Summer Wars, they went together well. Yes. This one, they don't. Summer Wars, the, the B plot is just another... It's an ex extension of it's the an A. It's an extension of the A. Here, A plot and B plot are two separate worlds. Well, they're mirrored, but they just... It's like a funhouse mirror. It don't make any sense. No. But I think we've said that a lot now. <laughs> and I don't mind repeating it. Yeah, God. <laughs> that's fair. So, ladies and gentlemen, that Snapping Princess, I don't know how much more we can exclaim that this movie really was... A train wreck. A train wreck. That so, looks good. Yeah. Because realistically, that's what carries it. The fact that it looked good. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Chris. I'm David. We'll see you next time.